So, welcome back to the Unsettled Season 3. Guess what we're discussing today? No. Stop it, stupid. This is a serious one. Okay. Come on. Have a guess. What is it likely to involve? Murder. You point out the obvious. Mystery. And the obvious. You know what, you really have really upset me some ways. Yes, we're gonna <laughs> We're gonna be discussing the satanic beheading. Which is a bit more interesting to mm. what is it now? You You'll like it. Okay. So if you're new, subscribe, like, and as he's never gonna say, turn the notification bell on. Subscribe. So you don't miss any episodes of The Unsettled Season 3. I was going to say it, but... Yeah, we well didn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. You ready? Mm hmm Down the rabbit hole. On Sunday, February the 8th in, in 1981, a concerned woman called the police to report that she had discovered a backpack covered and splattered in blood. Interesting. In Golden Gate Park. Okay. Mm, see? You like it now, aren't you? Inside, she found nothing out of the ordinary, just a few clothes. But the backpack covered in blood was enough for her to call the police. Which, yeah. If I came across a bloody backpack, I'd leave it there. After I'd examined the content. <laughs> <laughs> right, just in case. Officer, docker team, reported to the park to investigate and at first didn't notice anything of foul play. Right, so he's looked around, he's been like, no, there's nothing here. Right. That was until he came across a sleeping bag. Uh, I can see where this is going. No, you don't. Inside was most of a human body. The sleeping bag was full of blood. Yeah, saw it. <laughs> oh, you were there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. They identified the body due to the fingerprints on file belonging to Leroy Carter Jr., who had been on file due to his previously discussed criminal record. Uh, right. The most disturbing part of the crime scene was the head of Leroy Carter Jr. was now missing. And they found a body in there, so... Interesting. You like it so far, aren't you? The park was searched looking for Leroy's head. <laughs> it's got to be around here somewhere. <laughs> Can't have gone far. <laughs> right. <laughs> so whoever was responsible for the murder had taken the head with them. So they literally decapitated his head and just went, I'm having that. Yoink. <laughs> <laughs> Upon examination of the body of Leroy Carter, they noticed how the cut had been so precise as though the killer knew what they was doing. Okay. The strangest part of the case, or crime scene, was that what they found alongside the body, corn, as in popcorn, kernel corn, corn on the cob type of corn, and a chicken wing were all stuffed inside the gaping wound on his shoulders. Corn and a chicken wing. Popcorn chicken. <laughs> right, so obviously, yes, they put a chicken wing and stuffed inside the top. Yeah, you with me? Yeah. And a corn. Yep. Yeah into the gaping wound where the head should be. San Francisco's police department found a mutilated chicken corpse right near the body. So I guess we can kind of call... the satanic aspect. We can kind of call this then the satanic beheading of... Yeah, it's definitely... Leroy it's Carter. definitely ritualistic. You'd think that, wouldn't you? Right. But who was Leroy Carter Jr.? So let's just do a little backtrack and try and find out okay. who it was. 
So he was born September the 7th, 1951 in Louisiana. Leroy was in the United States Army. He attended the rank of Private First Class before he was discharged. Since his discharge, he had lived in the he lived on the streets and struggled in life and to adjust. Ah, right. He then turned to petty crimes to basically survive. So he was never actually um, arrested as such. It was survival, it was, yeah. more or less, right? It's clear his homelessness, 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 <laughs> fuck it, a fucking mouthful that is homelessness. There yeah. we go. <laughs> Led to the dire straits, possibly you know making him a target out the streets yeah easy picking but that is all the information you can find on this guy if he lived off the grid then it's probably okay you know what I mean like it's it's very hard to track down someone that's been living on the street or homeless yeah Mm. right so searches of the park continued nothing found no weapon no suspects nothing a new officer was appointed to the case Sandy Gallant who had, I don't know, I suppose worked on previous cases that involved the occult, mm-hmm. such as the Jamestown occult. That case was a mass suicide where cult members were forced to ingest poison, if not they were shot. So Sandy was called in as an expert on cults. She investigated them. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I guess a cult cop. Mm-hmm. Right. Sandy noted several similarities to Leroy's murder and Santeria. I'd never heard of this until I looked at something and I was fucking petrified. Mm. Right. Santeria is an Afro-Cuban religious cult developed from the beliefs and customs of the Yoruba people and incorporating elements of the Catholic religion. So this, this detective did her research, basically, mm. right? Tens of thousands of Americans practice Santeria. Or Santeria. Mm. That's kind of worrying. Once you find out what it is. Some core beliefs involve one God creating the universe and making, I guess, making gods oversee niche aspects of the world. Yeah. You know, you should be down for this type of stuff. You're well into this. (laughs) So it's like the Greek God, the demigod. Yeah. Rituals and sacrifices are often used in practices in St. Taring, St. Tara. Small animals, sometimes humans, are often sacrificed. Yeah, uh, children and yeah. such and such. So you add this with a mixed cults um, acts like the Aztec practices, the and, sa- and Satanism, mm. right? The, the Aztec stuff is, yeah. is quite weird. So Sandy quite sought weird. out experts in Santerra. She found out that some religious aspects of Santerra e.g. Mm-hmm. this version of this cult would remove the head and use it in a potion boiling the head pulling the eyes out removing the boiled brain and cutting the ears off consuming the mixture would apparently grant the drinkers or eaters <coughs> magical powers okay so basically pickling and boiling the head Okay, the head would be brewed for 21 day period in a cauldron. After that, the priest would sleep in the room with the cauldron for another 21 days to get a connection with it. Okay. After the 42 day. For that 42 day period, the head had to be returned to its final resting place or place of the body where it was removed. Right. So you drink its contents and then you've got to put the head back. And then you put the skull back in the park. Yeah. After Sandy presented the evidence to her supervisors with her own theory, she was met with scepticism. Mm. Yeah. You You would expect it. She wanted They're going to pl- give it back in a month or something. <laughs> she wanted police to remain in the area to look and watch for anyone to return the head. She was adamant the head was, was going to be yeah, returned. Right. Unfortunately, the decision was made not to have the park covered on the 42nd day. Right. Mm. The only officers that was there were Sandy and her partner. Right. 
after second guessing themselves and feeling that they both wasted their own time, mm. right? The killers had slipped by them somehow, carrying Leroy's head, and it was found on the forty-second day after he was murdered, just as Sandy and the partner said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they walked to the park. <laughs> With a head. And all right, there's no well, no police around. Right? But they've slipped past the two detectives and they put the head back. Them. Yeah, and they put the head back. <laughs> the occult, it confuses me. Right. So like I said, the killers had slipped in and out of the park without anyone noticing, put the head back and done a sort of fucking thing. Well, I'll tell you now. If, if you think at the dead of night, maybe you but, probably uh, get no, because no, that's when you're more suspicious. You want to do it during the day when there's loads of people around. But I can tell you now, if I went in the shop trying to steal a cream egg, someone would see me. <laughs> so how the fuck did these people get ahead back to its original resting place of death? Exactly. <laughs> Not confused. I'm confused. <laughs> No, I don't know. <laughs> right? So basically, the killer's or killer was mm-hmm. never found, but the head was put back, no. and Sandy obviously should have got so a shit ton of praise because she was correct. Uh, yeah. So it was it, it it confirmed what she had yeah summarized. about a Santeria or whatever it's called. Yes. So what do you think? Do you think it was like a a cult that picked on homeless people to do their like weird little sacrifice rituals? It, it would make sense. Yeah. It would make sense. Okay. And I know... You scratch your head like you're really enjoying that. So... (laughs) Stroke. (laughs) So, some religious aspects of Santeria comes from Satanism. Yeah. It's the misguided belief Mm. from what Catholic Church had written in that lovely old book called the Bible. No. Um, the best Christmas book anyone ever. can get. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing is missing his present. Um, if I got the Bible as a Christmas now, I'd be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's the first condition, I will let them off because you know they're, they're expensive. I'd still be <laughs> pissed. <laughs> but then. It is believed that Satan itself has fallen an angel. So the whole Please book's... Please don't make this too churchy, churchy, religious. The, the whole book's wrong, and that's what I'm going to say. So, right. <laughs> so you believe that it was possibly it's, a cult? It is a ritual. Right. So, so I actually think, like you, he was killed as a human sacrificial ritual based on the practices of Santeria, right? Mm. With the information available... So the chicken corpse, the chicken wing, the corn shoved into the neck, the twenty-one day ritual cli- like cliche type cycle. Yeah. It, right? it reminds me of the hard. I thought ritual. that. I thought that up until the point where I was thinking just a little bit outside the box. Okay. So I thought this was my other thought. Look, my other thought, <laughs> right, was someone mentally unwell, not belonging to a cult, but someone who had read or been told of the occult and wanted magic powers. Just maybe like an individual practitioner of it. Okay. Because there was only one sacrifice in that area, which obviously, you know, is the satanic beheading of the uh, Yeah. But okay, so yeah, I get where you're coming from. If there was if there was a cult activity within that area there would be more bodies yes. turn up. Yes, not just over one. the years. Unless they've shared his head. I wonder how long the potion lasts. No, because I want to witness it. I don't want to do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, I'm going to get so many invites. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was thinking, if it was a cult, like a proper official cult, 
there would be many be over the years like rather it, than I'm sure a localised you, area. And the way I see it is you can't share it because you have to bond with the head. You, It's individuality. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe it's someone that found a book that was like, oh, so I've got to chop off someone's head. I will pick a homeless person. There's a lot of mentally ill people out there that would do this. I would say it was very highly, highly plausible. Yes. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you agree. Hmm. Like, as as we both agree, if it was a proper cult, it would be... And saying that, if it was a proper cult, I'm sure they wouldn't be beheading people. <coughs> they'd find other ways. Someone's obviously looked up a version of this cult. True, they've probably picked the more archaic. Yes. Or the, and then they've the, gone, the okay, mainstream. a homeless person, I can kill them off, no one's ever going to miss them, I'll chop off their head, but I'll bring it back, I promise. Mentally unwell. It fits. It does. I mean, I've read up a lot of cases where a lot of people, women, weirdly enough, not more men, it's more women, seem to be consumed by the devil. Women seem to be prone to religious and other weird things, whereas, say, such a beheading mm-hmm. would, I don't know, I guess it would more suit her gender, I guess. You would, but he, you would, you would expect. You would think that anyway. Yes, I mean, if a woman is not likely to attack a man. Yeah, no, exactly. it would take more force. But then I also thought about the actual precise how to cut. They must have knowledge. Mm. But then cults were running rampant around this time anyway, so it could have been anyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna lie. No, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Mm. You like it, don't you? Mm. Chicken thing in your neck. <laughs> I won't be able to look at a chicken wing again without going. That's some popcorn. <laughs> Coincidentally oh. enough, though, it does sound like he's vegetarian because he's gone for the chicken wing <laughs> and the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone for the feathers <laughs> and not the breast. It does kind of remind me of a harvest ritual, though. It's a vegan ritual, that's what it is. Because, like, the, the harvest ritual is the first. Um, was it the first uh, end of the first harvest mm. for a continued consumption you would sacrifice chickens and you would implant certain vegetables within certain Orifices. areas and offices <laughs> of thy chicken and then you would bury it or you would hang it up wow um, I've just got this image of a chicken's head in the ground of a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Harvest time. God, I've got to take that to school. <laughs> take it with some tinned fruit and veg. What's that with your chicken? Why is it tom- walking funny? <laughs> what a tombola. <laughs> Why is your chicken walking funny? Well, if you get number 101, you get a chicken with a carrot up his ass. <laughs> Corn sticking out of his mouth. Like, and don't sleep outside and get your head cold. <laughs> and I'll put some popcorn. <laughs> no, it is a bit weird. But no, yeah, it's it it sounds very cold ish. But then, you know, the, mm. you're a psychotic, mentally deranged madman. Also, <laughs> would fit along those lines. Do you remember the guy? Now we're going off topic here. Do you remember the guy who? He went into the bookstore. He he actually looked like Jesus. He went into the bookstore and just ripped up all the Bibles and said it was fake. Yeah. Was it my era? <laughs> Duvet Dave. Duvet Dave. Da- oh. Yeah, you are here. Oh, 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 I miss Duvet Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys think? Do you think it was some type of satanic beheading or... Or the ideals of a psychotic madman. But I feel that that investigator should have got so much fucking praise and no one took it. I'm quite surprised she wasn't investigated, to be fair. You know what I mean? Like, if, Ooh, yeah, that's interesting. If you, you think... Yeah. You, you go, oh, it's going to... Yeah, the head's going to come back. This is definitely yeah. going to happen on this day. <laughs> yeah, the head's going to come back. I promise you it's going to return. Oh, look, only me and my partner and the head's here. I do cults, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, 
So, drop a comment below. This has been the Satanic Beheading of Leroy J. Carter, or Carter Jr., or however we want to do it. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Turn that little notification bell on, because that's what it's going to ask you to do anyway. <laughs> For all upcoming videos within the future. And I think... I'm going to get me that a chicken. I'm going to get me a chicken. What are these popcorn? Popcorn chicken? <laughs> no, I can't eat that, so. <laughs> Gives you two points. <laughs>